There will be preachers in the last days who will encourage their congregants to take the mark of the beast. The first sign of the end time that Jesus gave in Matthew 24, verse 4, is deception. Later, in verse 11, Jesus reiterated the issue of deception. To add more emphasis to this, Jesus said again in verses 23 through 25, Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arrive false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. So Jesus emphasized what he already said about deception. The high level of deception on the altar of Christ in our day is already a reminder of what Jesus said concerning the last days. We know from Scripture that after the rapture of saints, at some point, the Great Tribulation will begin. The Antichrist will take center stage of human civilization and make himself the object of worship. He will exalt himself to the point where he will be seen as a god on earth. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 through 17 says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. The Antichrist will at that time enforce everyone on the face of the earth to accept the mark of the beast either on their forehead or on their right hand. It is going to be tough for anyone who refuses to accept the mark because of the economic significance of the mark. The mark will become the only legal means of making financial transactions. The slogan will be, No mark of the beast, no buying or selling, so to speak. We also have it recorded that angels of the Lord will forewarn people not to accept the mark of the beast because of its eternal consequences. Revelation chapter 14 verses 9 through 10 says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Despite this great warning, there will be preachers in the last days that will encourage their congregants to take the mark of the beast. The implication of taking the mark of the beast is that everyone that has that mark has eternally associated with the devil. Those people will forever experience the wrath of God. They will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels. I fundamentally believe that there are ministers of churches today that would encourage their congregation to take the mark of the beast if it was to come today. The reason I say this is because there are some churches now that literally conform to the world. As a Christian, it is essential to be discerning and cautious when it comes to churches or preachers who appear to embrace the ways of the world and adopt its values. Embracing the world means conforming to the secular culture's norms, morals, and ideologies instead of adhering to the principles laid out in the Bible. Such churches and preachers may compromise biblical truths for the sake of popularity or to avoid confrontation with contemporary societal norms. Societal norms change consistently, however, the Word of God does not change. It will remain the same forevermore. God's view on sin is still the same. Avoid preachers that dance around the subject of sin. Do you know there are churches you can attend for a whole year, and you will not once hear the preacher preach on the subject of sin? This is wrong, because your problem, and my problem is sin. And there is only one answer to the problem of sin, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. First and foremost, Christians should be anchored in the Word of God. The Bible serves as the ultimate authority for faith and practice, providing guidance on how to live a Christ-centered life. When churches or preachers start to deviate from the teachings of Scripture and prioritize worldly views, 
it will lead to spiritual confusion and moral relativism among believers. Do not be comfortable in your sin. Righteousness and holiness is still required. Avoid preachers who are loved by the world. Avoid preachers who are accepted and adored by the world. John 15 verses 19 to 21 If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. Another important aspect is to examine the fruit produced by the church or preacher. Jesus emphasized the importance of recognizing false prophets by their fruit. Matthew 7 verses 15 to 20. If a church or preacher's teachings lead to immorality, division, or a focus on material prosperity rather than spiritual growth, it should raise red flags. A genuine Christian community should foster love, unity, and spiritual growth among its members, rather than merely catering to worldly desires. Furthermore, Christians should be cautious of churches or preachers who compromise on biblical truths to attract a larger audience. While it is essential to reach out and engage with the world, compromising core doctrines or watering down the gospel message to avoid offense can lead to a deluded faith. The Apostle Paul warned about this in Galatians 1 verses 8 to 9, emphasizing the seriousness of preaching a different gospel. True Christianity should challenge the world's values and call people to repentance and faith in Christ. What society does, that church does. What the society adopts, that church and the leadership of that church adopts. What the society accepts, that church and the leadership of that church accepts. And the Bible warns us that we are moving towards a time where the society will accept the Antichrist's mark. And because the society at large will accept the mark of the beast, there will be some churches and church leadership teams that will accept the mark also. And you can already see a pattern in some churches. We as believers need to wake up and look at how the spirit of the Antichrist is moving in some churches today. Just as surely as there is the Holy Spirit, there is a spirit in this world called the Antichrist spirit. And if a church is not guided and led by the Holy Spirit of God, it is led by the spirit of the Antichrist. There are churches that are being overpowered by the very spirit of the Antichrist, and it is not hard to see them. Churches which are no longer obeying God's words, but rather are conforming to the latest trends. There are churches that preach that Jesus is not the only way. They have adopted a universality view of salvation. They adopt that rather than Jesus Christ being the only way to God the Father, there are multiple ways to God the Father. And this is the very spirit of the Antichrist, attempting to demote Jesus from being the one and only way to being one of many ways. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. His spirit is at work. And even as I state this truth, I know you agree with it. When the mark of the beast arrives, some ministers will endorse that Antichrist and his mark to their congregation. You know that is the truth. Over centuries, people have used the Bible and twisted scripture in order for them to justify or fulfill their sinful desires. There isn't a doubt in my mind that they will find places to quote from in scripture to support their claims and to get their congregates confused. For instance, there will be one world government during the reign of the Antichrist. Preachers of that time will preach in support of the mark of the beast using scripture like Romans chapter 13 verses 1 through 2 which says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. I am sure people will be encouraged to receive the mark of the beast using scriptural passages that are twisted and misinterpreted. 
false teachers twist scripture. Satan quoted scripture to Jesus and twisted it. There is no reason why false teachers won't do the same for the mark of the beast. False teachers and prophets know how to use the scriptures to achieve their personal interests. The second beast in the book of Revelation is known as the false prophet. And one of the reasons this false prophet will prosper in its deceptive ministry is because of the lying signs and wonders they will perform. Revelation chapter 19 verse 20 says, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. So, people will be deceived by the false prophet to receive the mark of the beast in the last days. Many false prophets are out there operating under the influence of the spirit of the Antichrist. The Antichrist has empowered them to start working for him already. That is why the Bible says you must test the spirit. You, as a Christian, cannot just go on accepting everything into your life. You must test the spirit. Test the spirit with the word of God. Test all spirits. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And what every Christian needs to take heed of is that we live in an age of great deception, great and unusual deception. You have to test the spirit. Be careful about the church you attend. If your church is beginning to be shaped up by the culture of this world, confront the leadership. And if it continues down that route of culture of this world, leave that church and find one that believes in the core values of the Bible. We must heed the warning of Christ and we must make the Bible our compass. The Word of God is the constitution that guides believers, not society, not culture, and definitely not our own personal opinions, the Word of God alone. Therefore, we must not attempt to fit in at the expense of biblical instructions. We must not be carried away by the sweet words of preachers. We must be rooted in the Word of God to know what the Bible says about every matter so that we will not be swept off by the slight of men and by their deceptions. We must keep looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. In the 18th verse of the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation, the Bible clearly states that 666 is the number of a man. The Word of God wants you to know that the Antichrist is a man and not an angel. He is a man and not a system. He is a man and not a government. He is a man and not an institution. He is a man and not an organization. He is a man and not an establishment. He is a man and not a secret society. He is a man and not a spirit being. He is a man and not a force. He is a man and not an idea. He is a man and not a theology. He is a man and not a movement or force. No, the Word of God wants to make it clear that you know when we talk about the Antichrist, we are talking about a man and what a man he will be. The Bible describes this man as the beast of the sea. This symbolic description of the Antichrist as the beast of the sea reveals a tremendous amount about his nature, his origin, and his character. It is interesting to see that although the Antichrist is a man, God does not view him as a man made in the divine image of God, but rather God views him as a beast, as a wild animal, under the control of the dragon, Satan. We see in the second verse of the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation who gave the Antichrist his power. Revelation chapter 13 verse 2, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. It is Satan who gave him his power and great authority. Many people grossly underestimate the power and authority Satan has. First, 
let's establish something important. The Bible often refers to Satan as the God of this age. We see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, or in the prince of the power of the air. We see this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. These designations give insight to Satan's temporary authority and influence in the earthly realm. John's epistle even asserts 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. These passages together suggest that Satan does have some measure of authority over the kingdoms of this world, at least for a season. Now, when Jesus was offered these kingdoms, it wasn't because Satan had ultimate ownership over them. Rather, it's because in the fallen state of the world, Satan has been allowed a temporary rulership. But Jesus, recognizing the deceptive nature of the offer and the requirement to worship Satan, declined, quoting scripture in response, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. As previously stated, scripture states that the dragon, another name for Satan, will give his power, throne, and great authority to the Antichrist in Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. The Antichrist will be energized by the very power of hell. God does not view the Antichrist, who is the beast from the sea, and the false prophet, the beast from the earth, as men made in the divine image of God. Instead, God views them as beasts, as wild animals, under the control of the dragon, Satan. This is so important, and it sheds light on the fact that all other human beings who have lived and do not accept Christ will be judged at the great white throne judgment. Revelation chapter 20 verses 11 through 15. However, only two human beings, only two unredeemed human beings miss out on this great white throne judgment, the Antichrist and the false prophet. They are not even judged. They are directly cast into the lake of fire. This should show you that these two people are not normal individuals. These two people will be fueled by a level of evil unlike the world has ever seen before. Revelation chapter 20 verse 10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever.